Alabama with a lot of young players, four freshmen in the rotation, including Brandon Miller, the best of the bunch. Another one, Jaden. And then we've got a foul on the floor going against the Tigers. A little bit of a soft trap going on Brandon Miller, and when he threw out of it, that allowed a downhill drive. And when Jaden Bradley was able to get to the basket, that opens up the offensive glass. And Alabama shoots a good percentage from the field. But they're also a solid offensive rebounding team. It's all about threes and then dunks and layups for Alabama. You're not going to see a ton of mid-range jumpers. Boy, good ball pressure. Stolen away by Green. And then knocked out of bounds by Bradley, but it still belongs to Auburn. What a spectacular job by Zepp Jasper to get low and stay in front of Miller. And then Wendell Green Jr., who does such a great job getting steals. I mean, he's in the top 10 in the Southeastern Conference. He just came over, left his man, and he didn't go over there to put pressure on Miller. He went to steal the ball. Green is Auburn's leader in scoring, assist, and steals on the season. Coming off a 20-point effort in the loss at Texas A&M. He may be small, but he's a dude, and if you are good enough, you are big enough. Jalen Williams a bit of a dude himself as he knocks down the first basket of the game. He had a dozen against A&M midweek. Auburn leads the country in lefties. Alan Flanagan drawing Brandon Miller. A little screen, rescreen with a handoff. And they got the switch. Miller a deep three. Off the back of the iron and Janai Broom down with the rebound for Auburn. Janai Broom, the transfer from Moorhead State, has been a revelation. He's proven that he can compete at this level. Averaging about 18 and 10 over his last six games. A turnover here, and then even though they had numbers, Alabama gives it right back. Well, Nate Oates has been concerned about that for a good part of the season. Yeah, Alabama does turn it over a little bit too much. And because they are so capable offensively, you know, when you don't get a shot, there's so many good things that happen when you don't turn it over. You get a shot, you get a chance to get fouled, you get a chance for an offensive rebound if you miss. And obviously a difficult environment in which to call plays and really know what everybody is doing. And Nate Oates told us yesterday, Alabama practiced the last two days with loud crowd noise in their gym, trying to simulate the kind of environment they're facing here today. Yeah, that happens in football. I remember John Beeline doing that a lot when he was at Richmond and then at Michigan. You try to get your team to be able to communicate when they can't hear one another. 9,121, a sellout. Every game's been sold out all year here in Auburn. Broom. And the lefty little shot put that rolls off the rim. Broom has been so good all year long, and he's an excellent shot blocker. This is Charles Bediaco, a little bit too strong off the glass, and Alabama still scoreless. How about that one-handed rebound by Broom? A really good job by Williams to pick up the roll, Bediaco. Boy, Green with some nifty dribbling, nice crossover, but Auburn with little guards, and they're facing a lot of length when they go inside against Bama. When he made that drive, he was just body-seeking, trying to draw the foul, just got caught underneath the basket. But you're not going to find a more courageous driver than Wendell Green Jr. Zepp Jasper's gone to the bench. K.D. Johnson has come in, but he didn't have his jersey tucked in, so one of the officials blows the whistle, so he gets that taken care of. The fashion police! <laughs> Williams and he's got all the points in this game an early 5-0 lead for the Tigers Auburn very good and out of bounds situation just a little flex action and the screener popped out to the three-point line Nearly another turnover, but a foul called on Janai Broom, who really didn't like the call. First on Broom. There was a reason he didn't like it, because he got all ball. And if they called it on Broom, that was a bad call. I thought it was going to be on the blowing up the, the handoff action. And it did go on Broom. Yeah, that was all ball. He sits Dylan Cardwell, the junior from Augusta, Georgia, into the game now for Auburn. Alabama, one of the best offensive teams in the nation, still scoreless better than three minutes in. 
Bradley tied up by Johnson, a held ball. The possession arrow keeps it with Bama with five on the clock. You know, Dan, a lot of a lot of teams go after the ball by reaching. You reach, try to slap it away. Watch how Auburn goes after the ball. They go to steal it. I mean, that was he just took it right out of his hands. Wound up being a jump ball, so Alabama. But this Auburn team that gets about eight steals a game, they go after the ball. Good pass. Clowney inside, only the tide on the board. Clowney, a freshman from Spartanburg, South Carolina, came in as a four-star recruit, and he has turned himself, Jay, into what looks like a surefire first-round pick. Now a steal by Charles Bediaco, and all of a sudden, Alabama back within one. Just a, a lazy lane line to lane line pass. You have to make a little pass fake here and see if the defender shoots the gap, and Bediaco just picked that off and took it the other way. That's how you answer a run on the road. Alan Flanagan using the ball screen. The lefty has it knocked away, but a foul called on the tie. Looks like I got Bradley on it. First on Bradley, so Flanagan will be going to the line. And just passing almost as an afterthought to reverse the ball, and that's where you just have to throw a simple pass fake and See if the defender tries to shoot the gap. Then he got a little back cut. Flanagan at the line in his fourth year in the program was coming off the bench at the beginning of the year. Then after an injury to Chris Moore, he moved into the starting lineup. A very experienced guy uh, with a, a diverse skill set. Can do a lot of different things. Well, he's so athletic. He's a playmaking wing. But he had an Achilles injury about a year and a half ago. And... You know, that affected him last year, but he, he's getting closer to his normal self. And he's drawn the Brandon Miller assignment here today as Jaden Bradley, strong guard, muscles it up and in. Boy, talk about strong. He's physical and a right driver. And when he gets downhill, he can cause some damage. But there was a ton of contact on that, and he played right through it. You and I had the game back in December in Houston when Houston was number one. Alabama with a big second-half comeback. Bradley sensational in that game. That was an amazing comeback by Alabama. And Wendell Green Jr. getting off to a good start is great news for Auburn. Now, KD Johnson gets off to a similar start. He's been struggling shooting the ball. That gives you a dynamic backcourt. Betty Yako and fouled from behind by Cardwell. A spirited start here in Auburn between these two in-state rivals and Jaden Bradley doing some good stuff early, Jay, for the tie. I wonder if he gets a first down there. <laughs> yeah, how could a foul not be called there and still made it? What a big drive. And then Wendell Green Jr., when he gets a little bit of space, he is un- Auburn head coach Bruce Pearl. And Bruce, starting out with, with your, you run a lot of offensive sets, but you have some staples. Yeah, just Jay, this is a simple little hook screen. Get a little set of screen and big. Have the big be late. Set a ball screen. And so the opponent's big is going to show and help. And then back screen them. You get your big to the rim. You step out the back screener. And the point guard can choose either one. And that really puts the defense in a position to communicate. And why do you run the one for? You always run it out of the same alignment. Why? Because I, I want the opponent to get used to that same alignment. And then it just gives me a chance to move personnel around a little bit. And right now, you know, we, we, we oftentimes will throw the ball to Allen Flanagan get the elbow so we fake the pass to the elbow they bite on it then you take a little on the back side set him a little back screen and look how open that is you lift KD Johnson out of the back side and then Wendell would have gotten a screen going to the corner from Dylan Cardwell so we love running screen to screen reaction it may, it may be maybe quote unquote simple but it still works that's the film room and speaking of screen for the screener, watch Wendell Green Jr. He's going to set a back screen for Leo Berman, and then he's going to get a screen for Chris Moore here, and he comes and takes a handoff and shoots behind Janai Broom. Screen for the screener action. You set a screen and get a screen, and it can be difficult to guard because it puts the defense in a position to have to communicate. you got to communicate on the back pick, then all of a sudden you got to guard a screen coming for that screener. Flanagan inside, can't finish. Broom with a follow. You know, I think when people think of Bruce Pearl, Jay, they think of the energy and the pep talks and the enthusiasm. And, but he's a terrific X's and O's coach as well. A great X and O coach. You know, they run a lot of old stuff from Dr. Tom Davis that goes all the way back to, to Pete Newell. You know, they run flex action and get a lot of really good things out of it. But boy, Janai Broom. Doesn't he remind you a little bit of Carlos Boozer with the presence he has, the way he plays? Yep. 
Corner three not there, but Burnett gets it back at a fresh 20. Griffin, a long three, and he's off to a good start today as the tide is back within four. Oh, I love Ryland Griffin and the way he is playing. Both he and Namari Burnett are different players than they were you know, a couple of months ago. And obviously Burnett coming off that injury, but Griffin's just getting better and better. And you can see his confidence blossoming. Griffin recruited by Auburn as well as Alabama. So was Brandon Miller. Everybody wanted Brandon Miller, who, by the way, in this game, Jay, scoreless, has only attempted one shot so far. Oh, that'll change. Now, he was scoreless in the first half against Arkansas. Eric Musselman put on a clinic and the scheme to guard him. But in the second half, I thought Alabama really adjusted well to get Miller the ball in the middle of the floor. Also a quiet start for Mark Sears, one of their top scorers. Knocked out of bounds. Still Bama's ball with nine on the clock. A great job by Jasper to switch off and knock that ball away. But Griffin is so confident. And that was after the offensive rebound. And the off when you get an offensive rebound, kick it out. That's by far the best time to ever hit a three because the defense is not thinking about playing defense anymore. They're thinking about going the, the other way on offense. And you're stepping into that shot, often unguarded. Bradley gets it in, but deep in the corner. Tough place to catch it. And the shot clock's a factor. Do they know it? Now Bradley does. Forced it up, and it's a turnover, another shot clock violation, and not great awareness on the part of the Tide there as they inbounded the ball. How much time was left? Yeah, just a lack of communication. That's where it's not just the guards. Everybody has to communicate that, kind of like in baseball when, you know, so, uh, infielder says two outs, and everybody echoes that, that command, if you will. And a foul inside on Miller, trying to defend in the post. Coming up next into the ACC we go here on ESPN. Duke trying to bounce back from a tough loss Monday at Miami. They will take on number eight Virginia in Charlottesville. You can see it with Dave O'Brien and Dick Vitale right behind us here on ESPN. Pitt, a win over Florida State today in Tallahassee. They're 11 and three. How about Jeff Capel's team? And then Virginia, Clemson right there as well. And Clemson at North Carolina right now so a lot going on in ACC country today when right, Duke has to go to Virginia to get healthy after that beating they took at Miami that is not the place you want to go to get healthy that's like if you want to relax going to the dentist's office green not this time and the rebound down to Griffin can they get Miller and or Sears involved at the offensive end ball pressure has been excellent by Auburn and it is again but a foul is called. Boy, I don't know. I certainly don't hear whistles here. I don't know how the players are hearing the whistle. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, it's been deafening here at times. I've had my decibel meter out, and it was 109 decibels in here. Just for some context, my loudest college football game I was at this season was 117 in Death Valley, LSU, Alabama. So it is comparable, even though we've got a roof in here. It is so loud. I'm just impressed that you travel with a decibel meter. <laughs> That's awesome. Miller. Good defense by Flanagan, but he scores over him. And we got a foul on Flanagan, who was doing everything he could to keep him out of the paint. But Miller just too long and strong enough there. Yeah, foul could have been called any time here, especially right there. I mean, you see all the contact, but he just kept going into his body after he went up. And Brandon Miller going inside of the three-point line to get a bucket. He can operate anywhere on the floor. And he, he's improved, Dan, in his finishing. Early on in the season, he's knocking three-pointers down, but shooting 40% around the rim. And now he's, he's getting stronger. He's really improved his body. And he's finishing plays around the basket. That's evidence of it right there. Could wind up as SEC player of the year. Could be a first-team All-American. Could be a top-five pick in the NBA draft. Oh. the decibel meter out again after that one what a play by Griffin the block and then the save or no was he out of bounds he was out of bounds but Dylan Cardwell set the side ball screen and just rolled right to the basket 
Sets the screen. Bediaco goes for the ball. And that left Cardwell wide open on the roll to the basket. Just lobbed up there beautifully by Wendell Green Jr., one of the top assist guys in the Southeastern Conference. That's a big-time play. Green 37 assists in his last six games coming into this one. Moore misses the three. Cardwell rips it away from Bediaco. What a tough play by Dylan Cardwell. They're making a lot of tough plays so far today. Moore called for the travel. Three-point lead, Auburn. Eight minutes left in the first half. Lots of fun so far here at Neville Arena. Grandpa Johnson gets to be here today to see Dylan play in person. Absolutely. Sending our thoughts to Thomas Johnson and echoing what Holly said. No reason to not go get a blood test. It's a simple thing to do. If there's an issue, then you consult with your doctor after that. But my grandfather had prostate cancer. My dad had prostate cancer. And anything that uh, men can do to find it early. Early detection is the key. So we encourage you to go get it done. A one-point game. There have been times in this game, Jay, where Auburn, it's, they've been on quite a roll, but uh, Alabama's hung around, started to make some shots. And Cardwell had it take it away, and it's out of bounds to the Tide. They can take the lead now. Well, Alabama did a good job defensively taking away that roll to the basket by Dylan Cardwell. Wendell Green Jr. lobbed it up for him again, but Alabama took advantage of it. Mark Sears has not really been able to get much offensively. He's being guarded by Zepp Jasper. And he's a 14 point per game guy. Miller. Boy, strong drive and then soft touch off the glass. And Alabama's got its first lead of the afternoon. That was a strong drive, but that left arm discarded Dylan Cardwell. And oftentimes that would be called an offensive foul. The crowd was, the crowd saw it. They didn't like it, but the referees let it go. Lanigan behind the back, and he's fouled, and will shoot a couple. But the strong drive was a big part of this. Now watch the left arm of Brandon Miller. I mean, there's no question that's an offensive foul. It gave him the space, just wasn't called. But that's a play I think a month or two ago he might not have finished with that kind of strength. He has really improved his finishing. And yeah, not just a three-point shooter. He's outstanding beyond the arc, but he can hurt you in a bunch of different ways. Well, he's got it all. Like Brandon Miller, I, I think, is first-team All-America. And if you had a first-team All-America right now, the average size would be 6'10". So Edie, Zach Edie, Miller. Trace Jackson Davis. Yep. You'd put those guys up there. Jalen Wilson yep. uh, of Kansas would be up there. And uh, either Ajulis Tubelis of Arizona or Drew Timmy of right. Gonzaga. And, and both Timmy and Tubelis are 6'10". <laughs> so that comes out with, with Edie's got a little extra height that he can give to others, but it would be 6'10 would be the average of the five first-team All-Americans. A year of the big man in college basketball. Miller and Betty Ako will slam it home. Boy, and Miller just very aware of the attention that he draws. And when Broom came out to help, that was going to leave Betty Ako open. He was going to have a little guy trying to keep him from the basket. Really good offense by Alabama and a really good pass by Brandon Miller. Alabama 21 and 3 on the season. The only losses to UConn on a neutral court in Portland back in November. They lost to Gonzaga on a neutral court in a wild game, 100 to 90. And then they lost a couple of weeks ago in Norman against the Sooners. Now, Janai Broom jumps out here, and that opens up the roll. That means Wendell Green Jr. has got to come pick up Betty Ako. That is not an advantage for the 5'8". Wendell Green Jr. going up against, uh, against the seven-footer, Betty Ako. I mean, basically, when Betty Ako sets a screen, when he gets out of that screen, you as the defender, you have to get out right away. Big Monday doubleheader coming your way. Miami, we talked about Jim Laranaga's team with a big win. Uh, they had an impressive win against Duke last Monday night. They're in Chapel Hill this Monday night. And then which absolutely blew out West Virginia today. I think they beat it by 34. They're going to love it Monday night in the second game. Nice doubleheader Monday night on ESPN. Little zone look for Auburn right now. Winner, got caught in the air. 
turns it over, and an Alabama foul going on Betty Yako, and it's more free throws for Auburn. Auburn, whether it's a possession of zone where they were extending out and matching up out of it, or their man-to-man, -man, they have been very alert trying to get steals, but it all starts with their ball pressure. You put pressure on the ball, you make the offensive player think more about your pressure than about running offense. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. One point lead, Auburn. The jungle is alive here on this Saturday afternoon. First of two regular season meetings between these in state rivals. And for Auburn, if they can win this game, it would be huge. They're 17 and 7. They appear to be in the field right now. Joe Lenardi's got them as a nine. They're two and five in quad one. This would obviously be a quad one win. The bucket for Nick Pringle, the 6'9 junior from Seabrook, South Carolina. He had 12 very loud, impressive minutes, Jay, against Florida. Four points, four rebounds, three steals, and a couple of blocks. Well, that bucket was made by Namari Burnett against the zone, just getting that baseline drive and drawing the defense. Janai wow. Broom called for the foul, and that'll be number two on him. And now Bruce Pearl's got a decision to make. That wasn't much of a foul, but a really good drive by Namari Burnett. Yeah, there, there was nothing there. That's just rebounding. I mean, that's two fouls now on Janai Broom. Neither one of them were fouls. That's unfortunate for him. That's why Bruce Pearl is as angry as he is. So Broom sitting for Auburn with two. Clowney sitting for Alabama with two. A good screen by Miller. Alabama had made six in a row before that miss. And it's Auburn ball. One of the things that looking up for a replay. One of the things that impresses me most, Dan, about Alabama is for such a young team, young in, in so many key spots, you know, they don't get rattled. And this is a tough environment in which to play, and they got punched in the mouth right away. And they fight every play. Johnson, the spin and a nice look. Williams for three. Boy, Katie Johnson giving Auburn some great minutes so far today. Talk about a courageous driver, both he and Green. But Jalen Williams coming in and knocking down shots. Auburn needed to hit some shots to win this game. And they've been hitting those shots early. Now, Auburn really only shoots about 30% from the three-point line. Just a, a terrific drive, a little hesitation, crossover, and spin. And Williams at the three-point line ready to shoot it as the ball arrived. Johnson can be so dynamic. He transferred in from Georgia, and Bruce Pearl used to call him, he's our psychopath. <laughs> it meant it obviously in a good way, but he can go off on you. Mark Sears, his first point of the afternoon, again, averaging 14 a game. You know where Mark Sears is from? Muscle Shoals, Alabama. You know who else is from Muscle Shoals? I can tell you because Reese Davis tells me all the time. <laughs> the pride of Muscle Shoals, Alabama. Well, Reese, as nice a guy as you'll meet, he's thrilled for the success that Sears is having. But he told me yesterday the problem is he's now, Reese, is now the 78th best point guard to ever come out of Muscle Shoals now that Sears has exceeded Reese's exploits. That seems a little generous, actually. Yeah. He actually told me today, <laughs> whoever, the guy who's number 79 is on the phone and complaining about and an Alabama foul. <laughs> and Bruce, Bruce Pearl has got his hands on his head saying, you called that one? Let that one go. We had a layup. <laughs> <laughs> he wants a flagrant. And are they going to have a look at it? Well, it's just a question of whether it was a basketball player, whether he's just grabbed to keep him. There was nothing there just to keep him from there. And probably not, you know, in Bruce's opinion, not enough to not enough to warrant a call given they had to run out the other way. And that's actually something the rules committee should, should look at. You know, sort of the, the same rule as the NBA when right. you have a clear path foul. It's the second on Sears either way. The question is, will it be a common foul or a flagrant one? Very common. Very common. Yes. <laughs> so common, maybe not even a call. 
Yeah, I think you and I are in agreement. They will look it over during the timeout. 4.08 to go and a good one here at Auburn. Welcome back to Auburn. Coming up at the half, the Jeep halftime report with the guys. And let's go first to Coach. He is behind Auburn's bench, and he loves the ball pressure and defense this Auburn team's putting on. Yeah, Bruce Pearl coming into this game thought he wanted to get up underneath this Alabama offense. Keep him out of the middle of the floor. Keep him out of the slot. Be real physical in those dribble handoffs. He's done all of that in the first half. Fonz, what do you have on Alabama? Alabama's done a terrific job. You're talking about a team that has freshmen at many positions. They could have allowed this game to get away from them, but no, this young team has tremendous poise. Look for them. They're trying to track the middle of the floor in their first offensive possession. Thanks, guys. We'll see you at the half. Ollie, thank you. The Jeep Halftime Report with Coach Fonz and the 78th most accomplished point guard in Muscle Shoals, Alabama history. Moments for you. I thought you were supposed to say Reese and the guys. I That's the... I know, but I... I the, the guys have been a little annoyed that Reese has been getting you know, a little bit too much attention they at their be. expense. So. They should be annoyed. It's not Diana Ross and <laughs> the Supremes are crying out loud. <laughs> We're flipping the script. I guess I, I guess uh, Reese doesn't have his earpiece in right now, and now he's hearing it. Well, they're on you, Reese. When, you, when he's got the earpiece in, it can move that toupee around. <laughs> Williams piling up the points. He had the first five points of the game, and he extends Auburn's lead to three. Alabama going up against Auburn's man-to-man -man defense. Auburn went a few possessions of zone, but Alabama's done a good job of getting into the lane. It's 20 to 4 in paint points. One thing Alabama's not doing is knocking down threes. They love the three, but just two for six from beyond the arc today. David Williams has more threes on his own than Bama's got. A fantastic shot fake first to get the defense to fly by and then the sidestep three. That's three for three from the three-point line for Jalen Williams. Miller, no. Johnson the rebound. Boy, it's been gang rebounding for Auburn. Even the guards are getting their noses dirty. Flanagan short, but the rebound down to Williams, but he's out of bounds. And Alan Flanagan, he can make perimeter shots, but I think he needs to put his head down and drive it. You know, take it into the paint. What about at the other end? Nate Oates' teams, Buffalo, Alabama, known for taking and making threes. How do they get some good looks from the they are? Well, right now, Auburn is staying with their three-point shooters on drives. They're not helping off. They're making them make those tough twos, and if they can make enough tough twos to beat you, you tip your cap to them. But you can't come off help to take away that two and give up an open three. So they're executing Bruce Pearl's game plan. That was a big part of practice yesterday. Jaden Bradley gets to the rim. Got the switch with Dylan Cardwell on him. Took him right to the basket on a tough drive. But again, for Bruce Pearl, that's a tough two. He made it over an excellent shot blocker, but it's only two. Williams feeling it. Might have been a bit of a heat check three right there, and he's still down. He was late getting back to his feet, and it leaves Sears open, and Alabama cashes in. And all of that was Williams was maybe trying to buy a foul, and by the time he got up, it was a numbers advantage for the tie. And you give a little bit of an advantage, and all of a sudden, Mark Sears is pulling up for an open three, and he has not been open much in this ballgame. The transfer from Ohio. A real stable veteran presence in the backcourt for the tie. Out of bounds, still Auburn's ball, 13 to shoot. Williams taking that pass and putting up the three, got hit, looked like he just got his feet tangled up a little bit and couldn't get up right away. And a really good pass ahead, and then the return pass took advantage of the over-pursuit by Williams, and Sears was wide open and took that rhythm three. Johnson behind the screen from Cardwell off the glass and down to Pringle and now once again the tide can take the lead. A drag screen in transition and a great crossover. Miller slips and a travel is called. Those little random ball screens drag screens in transition are difficult to guard. But he just lost it with that left hand. Then his left foot slipped out from under him. Really good job by Dylan Cardwell to keep his body between Miller and the basket. 
Betty Yako back into the game Pringle to the bench for Alabama. Yeah, and that was a good example from Dylan Cardwell of look you can't take everything away from Brandon Miller. But if you take the, the most important thing away that's keep your body between him and the basket it makes him make an extraordinary play he can do that. But you don't want to open up open the gate and all of a sudden he's getting to the rim. Lanigan gets into the paint puts it up can't hit it. Cardwell rebound. The rebound. Boy, the big guys Broom and Cardwell have both played very tough so far today. Not surprisingly. Oh, and a bad break there. Cardwell was up there, but it was still on the rim. Oh, and in transition, Miller with a finish. Boy, and give credit to Mark Sears. He shot out of there like a bullet. And all of a sudden, it's an advantage situation, basically three on one for Alabama. And watch him when he gets the ball. He is gone. And Alan Fangen backpedaling and paid the price. There are no posters anymore, but what, what is that, an NFT? <laughs> what a big play by Brandon Miller. That's a momentum killer. Boy, he, uh, he impressed himself, didn't he, after that? A two-point lead now for Miller. For uh, Miller and Alabama. They have trailed most of the first half here at Auburn. And that little flex action now the handoff green didn't get the call but he got the bucket and Bruce Pearl is not happy that no foul was called there and a timeout on the floor with 28 seconds to go in the half another look at the Wendell Green bucket but no foul Jay now Wendell Green Jr. comes off this little handoff and he got hit going up with it. Bruce Pearl not happy. But a great play by Green Jr. Ooh, we're firing up the Chewy app. Can't say no to these prices. Hmm, clumping litter, resounding yes. Salmon pate, love that for me. Essentials, check. Ooh, we have enough to splurge on catnip toys. We did it. I feel so accomplished. Pet me, please. Okay, that's enough. Now back to me time. Love you. Great prices, happy pets. Chewy. Jay, there are some guys who can just do things that most other guys can't. Brandon Miller's one of those guys. And he basically threw that into the basket. And even he knew that was eye-opening. He's gonna, he has done and is going to continue to do a lot of eye-opening things. And he is going to be taken off the board in the NBA draft in the first five picks. Brandon Miller is a talent like few others. Tied at 37 in a really fun first half. Alabama with the ball in about four seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. And really, Alabama can take this all the way down and just get it off before the expiration of the clock. It gives them time for an offensive rebound, but not enough time for Auburn to take it the other way. Quinterly off to Miller. Very deep three. Johnson down with it. Gets it off. Oh! <laughs> what an effort by Katie Johnson. That close. As a competitive, intense, entertaining first half comes to a close with number three Alabama and Auburn tied at 37. It's been almost 40 years since Auburn to be the top three team at home. Holly Rose with Nate Oates. Coach, everything didn't go your team's way in that first half, but how did the resilience of this young group start to get, gain some momentum? Yeah, we started to get our pace a little better towards the end. We got to quit fouling them. They lived at the free throw line. It's hard to get our pace when they're shooting free throws every other time down the floor. But our guys, got, they got a lot of confidence. I mean, they played in big games before, so we're going to answer the bell. But we got to come out. We got to play better defense without fouling so we can get in transition more in the second half. Thank you, Coach. Nate Oates in the tie, tied at 37 with Auburn. Should be a great second half here in the jungle. Lots to talk about on this busy Saturday in college basketball. The Chief Halftime Report is coming up. Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, 
LaFonso Ellis coming your way after this timeout. Thanks for not saying Reese and the guys. <laughs> Saturday primetime presented by John Deere. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Jalen Williams was the man in the first half for the Tigers. Three threes, 14 points at the break. For the most electrifying play of the first half might have belonged to Brandon Miller. Took him a while to get going, but once he got going, he really got going. And he had eight in the first half. As we go to the second half, tied at 37. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, we expected excitement, intensity, a close one, and it's been everything we could have hoped for. So yeah, and Auburn's defensive intens intensity was excellent, as, as was Alabama's. But Alabama shot 62% yeah. in that first half. And this uh, Auburn team shot, shot just 37. You know, that can't continue if Auburn wants to win. They're going to have to make some more shots. But we saw Alabama get to the basket. You saw Ryland Griffin come off for a handoff. It was blown up by Leroy Berman. Then he just comes back the other way for the handoff and gets all the way to the basket. 24 points in the paint. Watch. You're going to see a little ball screen set by Charles Bediaco. Two defenders go to the ball, and Bediaco just rolls to the basket out of the middle of the floor. That means help has to come a long way, and you can kick it back out for an open three if Bediaco's not open. Really good offense run by Alabama to get to the basket. Holly Rose spoke with Bruce Pearl coming out of the locker room. Well, they got up to a hot start offensively, but then started to struggle a little bit to hit shots. And he said, that's to be expected. Alabama's the best defense in the country. He said, watch for us to go more into Janai Broom. He was quiet in that first half, just a couple of looks. They want to establish him and get him going, use his size in the post. Broom, of course, sat with some foul trouble in the first half. Noah Clowney of Alabama sat with some foul trouble. We'll see if both of them can get more involved here in the second half. And an early touch, as Holly said, for Broom. And he's going up against Betty Aka, who's long-armed and a really good shot blocker. Jasper a little strong on the three. Out of bounds. It'll be Auburn ball, though. Well, Broom is, is burly and strong. And geez, it, Alan Flanagan got his hand caught wow. in between the two chairs. That could have been ugly. Glad he's okay. Of course, the son of Wes Flanagan, one of the assistant coaches, terrific player back in his day at Auburn. Green into the paint. Going a couple of good looks here out of the half for Auburn, but they can't knock him down. Landing and guarding Miller. And Miller's bigger and a little bit longer. Clowney, a miss on the three. Auburn ball. And Noah Clowney missed most of the first half with those two fouls that he picked up at the eight minute mark. And he provides a lot of length and athleticism for Alabama. Also had a big collision, as Bama fans know, in the Florida game with Colin Castleton midweek. Uh, no concussion issues. It was more just a facial bruise and back in there and fine here this afternoon. Ball screen set up high, and that gives a lot of space against that drop coverage by Betty Ako. So how does Alabama have to do a better job defending that? Well, you have to get up to touch. Bediaco's playing drop coverage. He's right basically at the free throw line. That leaves a lot of space for Wendell Green Jr. to get that shot. And still Alabama ball. Boy, this is a good battle between Flanagan and Miller, who are, you know, kind of joking with one another, really respecting each other's games right now. Well, Flanagan had a chance to take that the other way. He won that lane, and then Miller just kind of clipped him and was able to, to keep him from getting the ball and going to, down for a dunk. But look how Wendell Green Jr. gets right up underneath Jaden Bradley. Bradley inside off the glass and good. He is one downhill driver, man. Physical, loves to go to his right, that time to his left, but he can take a bump and still finish a play. And again, a freshman, he's out of Rochester, New York. Three freshmen in the starting five for Alabama, plus Ryland Griffin coming off the bench. They're going to keep setting that high ball screen, let Green go to work, and that was not the shot, I think, that Bruce Pearl wanted. But take a look at Jaden Bradley. He is one strong driver. He's always being forced to his left, but that action took him to his left. He took a bump from Alan Flanagan, still was able to get that to go. And as he develops into a more consistent perimeter shooter, and I think he will, you know, a lot of defenders are going underneath on screens and begging him to shoot it. But he, he's he's a really good player now. He's going to be a great college player. Wendell Green Jr. at the line for Auburn. 
A three shot foul got fouled by Sears Green in the game here against Alabama last year had 23 points six assists. He was coming off the bench last year for the Tigers to start over to mainstay this year. Holly's got more. Well he's from Detroit Michigan but ended up going to Eastern Kentucky to start his career and when I asked him why he said I wanted to play right away. They had a spot I knew I'd get playing time and I wanted to get on the court. He said I absolutely love basketball. The NBA is my number one goal and I'm obsessed with getting there and even Alabama coach Nate Oates said man I remember him from Detroit. He was coaching high school basketball in that area saw Wendell in that time and Wendell said yeah he's even been in a game of mine where we were talking a little trash to each other. So the Detroit roots were looked at Wendell Green Jr. out of high school and they were a little concerned about his size and when he was available in the transfer portal Stephen Pearl went to his dad Bruce Pearl and said hey Green's available and they went and got him He's, he and Jani Broom are, are two of the great stories out of the transfer portal guys that could have you know, they, they go to a, a quote unquote lower level and what are they supposed to stay there forever they've proven that they can play up and they do it now their household names as a result of it. Good ball movement by Auburn to get the ball to the other side of the floor and then attack and you know, great teacher of the game Kevin Eastman always says the best place to score is the other side of the floor reverse that thing and then attack the defense and Alan Flanagan was not messing around right there Betty Yako with the foul so Flanagan with a couple. You heard Nate Oates tell Holly Rowe at halftime, you know, we need to play defense without fouling because we're putting them at the line too much. And really, the free throw line is how Auburn has had the lead for most of the first half and now into the second half. They haven't shot the ball well, but look at that free throw disparity. Yep. 16 for 19 now from the line, and the lead grows to five for the Tigers, and they're on their feet in many sections here at Neville Arena. And Alan Flanagan is not going to help off of Brandon Miller. Wow, nice reverse there, laying it in with the left hand is Bradley. And Alabama continues to attack the basket, but one of the reasons is that Auburn is not leaving three-point shooters on drives. It's not that their defense isn't contracting. They're willing to give up the tough two rather than risk the open three for a team that really feeds off threes. And again, that was the game plan yesterday. Points in the paint reflect that, Jay. 28 for Alabama, 6 for Auburn. Flanagan with a pull-up. Yes. Well, that's his game. The mid-range. He's got guard skills and a very good defender. Boy, can Bradley drive. You talked about one of the great downhill drivers you will see in the college game. And he took a shot, landed on his right elbow, it appears. And let's hope he's all right. Jaden Bradley of McDonald's All-America. He can refuse ball screens, good passer. But even though people are going underneath on him on screens, it's really up to the screener, some of the big guys, to angle their screens to make the defender go over so that he can get downhill because that's his game is getting to the basket, getting into the lane, and drawing defense so he can play out of it. But he was so good, Jaden Bradley against Houston. And his defense on Marcus Sasser, Namari Burnett did a good job when he was on him too, but you know, he, he kind of changed the game, I thought, in the second half with his ability to get to the basket, his transition, and his toughness. And that's why Nate Oates says, you know, yeah, this is a hostile environment. It's a great environment, but they have played at Houston and won. They have played in other tough road environments, and they won a four overtime game against North Carolina. That went up at the uh, Phil Knight Invitational in Portland. Yeah, they beat they beat two number one ranked teams before the new year. Yeah. Turnaround, not there. Flanagan looking for the foul. Here comes the tie. Sears with a burst of speed, and it's a two-point game. What a crossover and change of direction by Mark Sears. You know, and he's another transfer portal guy that. You know, under recruited out of Hargrave military and went to Ohio and led the Mac in scoring. But he, he's proven he can play for anybody. Green again using the screen and a foul is called. Bradley doesn't like the call pleading his case with Terry Oglesby one of the officials but Green is headed back to the line. I mean there's no question about it. he's not in the legal guarding position he hit him as he was going up. There's just no question about it. 
Boy, Green is kind of equal parts shifty and crafty. He knows exactly what he's trying to do out there. Well, and he's been consistent. You know, he's got logo range, but you mentioned last year, so Zepp Jasper started at point guard, yet KD Johnson, and then Zepp Jasper would wear out the opposing point guard, and then Wendell Green Jr. would come in the game and totally change the pace and the tenor of the game. And look, it was a little easier last year when you had Walker Kessler with triple doubles with 10 blocks in a game right. and then Jabari Smith Jr. You lost two lottery picks or two first round picks. Jabari Smith was the third pick overall. So it's a different makeup of this team, but they play just as hard. And all three guards bring something different to the table. And here comes Johnson who gave Bruce Pearl some great minutes in the first half. Sometimes he can be a little wild out there, but he wasn't wild in the first half. But he played great. He made good decisions. He took good shots. He was terrific on the defensive end. Well, he was three of his last 15 coming into this game from three point range. Had not been scoring as efficiently as normal. But he got off to a great start in this one. Wendell Green's already got eight points in the second half. As Auburn's lead is now five and now a foul at the other end and free throws coming for the tie. One of the things you have to do when you're guarding the ball against Alabama is you've got to square it up. You give an angle and as Bruce Pearl likes to say you can't open the gate. You know you can't let one foot go back and all of a sudden there's an angle to the basket. And that's what happened there. KD Johnson just opened the gate and Jaden Bradley was gone. Easier to say than it is to do. It's hard to guard these dynamic guards. Griffin now coming in. Sears will sit. I mean, Alabama, whenever there's a substitution, you're saying, man, these guys got depth there. Yeah. They don't take a dip when they go to the bench. Burnett, Gurley, Griffin. Yes, Nate Oates about the success he's had at, in high school at Romulus at the University of Buffalo and now in Tuscaloosa and he says there's one common denominator. I've been lucky to have good players everywhere I've gone coached 11 years at Romulus High before taking the job in Buffalo and he had great success there as well with three NCAA tournament bids in four years. Well, any coach will tell you you can lose with good players but you can't win without them. Miller again guarded by Flanagan. Flanagan got a piece of that, otherwise it was an easy three. And Miller up over the top of Green, lost it. Clowney forces it up and is foul. And the length of Alabama a factor on that possession. Four point lead Auburn as we go to break. When we come back, Jay Billis hanging with a gold. Four feet with Olympic gold medalist Suni Lee. I'm told you eat something specific before you compete on the beam. What is it? I have to have pickles every single time before I go. Why? Um, because I got a 10 the first time, so now I'm convinced that it gets me 10s. Do you eat anything special after a meet, after you compete? After every single meet, I have to have pizza. Who is the biggest celebrity you've ever met? The biggest celebrity would have to be Justin Bieber. How about second? Um, second, maybe you. <laughs> At least I got a maybe. Uh, what's the last thing you binge watched? Um, Grey's Anatomy. And where do you keep your gold medal? I usually keep it in a safe, but last time I kept it in a safe, I forgot the code, and I had to have somebody come break it out. So. I just kind of leave it out. You no. had to get a safe cracker. I would wear it all the time. <laughs> 94 feet with Suni Lee. Well, we are giving this segment a perfect 10. Jay, that was fantastic. That is the best athlete on Auburn's campus, Suni Lee. She did score a perfect 10 in their meet last night against LSU. She was spectacular on the bars. Aliyah Finnegan from LSU also scored a perfect 10 on the vault table. And if you haven't been to SEC Gymnastics, you need to go. They are must-watch television. And this building was absolutely packed to the roof to come and watch these women perform. And the team is here today. And I really loved it. The men's basketball team was here in the building watching the women compete last night. Well, Holly, our director, Mike Roig, only gave Suni Leah 9.7 on her <laughs> 94 feet. And she looked at him and said, I'll show you a 10 tonight. And she did on the par uneven parallel bars. And she is delightful. Uh, as am I, by the way. 
That didn't come across quite as much in the in the <laughs> <laughs> But we'll take your word for it. I thought I was quite grateful. Yeah. yeah, this is the second sellout of the weekend here in this building because, uh, as Holly said, the Auburn LSU gymnastics meet was sold out last night as well. Better than 9,000. Broom into some traffic. Somehow found oh. four. And that's going to be a held ball. Good defense there, and it'll go back over to Alabama. What a play by Namari Burnett. Take a look at Suni Lee last night with her perfect 10. Beyond impressive. Wow. After every meet, she eats a pepperoni pizza. Pickles before she has pickles before the bean hey. and pepperoni pizza after. Don't mess with a streak, right? If it's working, keep going. And the same thing applies to Ryland Griffin, who scores again and continues to put up points. Well, how about the bench production for Alabama in this game? Namari Burnett with that spectacular two-handed block from behind to tie the ball up, and then Ryland Griffin with another bucket. Johnson tipped up, no good. Bounces down to Johnson. Corner three. And the rebound to Javon Quinterly. And this is the issue for Auburn is making shots. Well, wow. not a good pass by Quinterly. Yeah, Auburn typically not a great shooting team. They are shooting the three reasonably well today. They're six for 16, but overall, they're 345th in the nation out of 363 Division I teams in three-point percentage. Green. Broom. Moore working hard, comes up with a rebound. Johnson wide open. Rebound Flanagan and a foul on Burnett. Well, Auburn really going to work on the offensive glass, but when you kick it out and get a wide open three, that can be pretty deflating. And Alabama, they're just so explosive. A, you just get the feeling that they can take off at any time. And Auburn has to keep them at bay. And one of the ways you do that is by being efficient and scoring on the offensive end. You can't expect your defense to pitch shutout after shutout. You gotta you gotta make some buckets. Lior Berman into the game for Alan Flanagan. Oh, he was open for a second, didn't realize that Bradley had backed off. Now Johnson spins and finishes. Boy, what a spin move by KD Johnson. How do you guard that? Clowney all alone, the assist to Sears and tied back on top. I don't think Janai Broom can help off for that long. You've got to show and recover right away. Because you get the ball back to Clowney in the middle of the floor. He is super athletic and long. And it's kind of a different look with Clowney at the five and Miller at the four, a smaller lineup without Betty Ako in there. Well, this is the lineup they went to at the end of the Houston game. They took Betty Ako out and they became much more versatile, and much more difficult to deal with. Good effort defensively by Berman and the Tigers, and the possession arrow gives it back to Auburn. And Dan Auburn is grinding in this game. They, they haven't hung their heads after missing some shots. Janai Broom had a close one near the basket, didn't get it to go. But Lior Berman does a really good job of going after that loose ball, fighting for it. And now the possession arrow gives it to Auburn. And Berman's a good cutter, and he can make a perimeter shot. Nine lead changes in this game. Betiaco comes back in. Miller is going to sit. And I think if they want to get the ball, Auburn, to Janai Broom, they're going to have to move Bediaco around. It's going to have to come off some ball screen action because hes I don't think Broom is going to be backing him down into the post. There's the flex action screen for the screener. Broom off to Green. His shoe's Green's coming got off. a problem with his shoe. Yeah, he got it back on. But he's going to drive it and score it. What a play by Green! Wow, like he was wearing slippers. He got it back on, then went to the rim. <laughs> 
Berman the foul. We got to get another look at that when we come back. Almost looked like he was trying to get some gum off the bottom of his shoe or something. The way he was moving it around, he was just trying to get it back on Jay. So quick he steps out of his shoes. Wait a minute. This I got a little flat tire here. <laughs> and then shows it's not flat, just takes off and lofts it over the shot blocker, Noah Clowney, and right in. Great play. From that two finalist type candidates for player of the year. Angel Reese has been a monster this season, coming off a 20 and 20 game. Aaliyah Boston, last year's national player of the year, coming off a huge game against UConn, winning there for the first time in Gamecock history. They are 30 and 0, a new school record. This is must watch television tomorrow. Good job, ladies. Can't wait to be there. I'm driving five hours after the game tonight. I'm going to do anything I can to get there and watch this one. Uh, rebounding is going to be the deciding factor in that game both LSU and South Carolina get almost half of their missed shots as offensive rebounds. Something's got to give. <laughs> and we, we just saw a guy make a 94 foot putt yeah. at halftime to win a car and he did it with a bullseye blade putter. Yeah. We needed Holly to have the decibel meter out for that. It was as loud during the timeout when he won the cars. It's been all day and it's been loud here all day. Number three, Alabama against Auburn. First of two regular season meetings between these two. And as we said right off the top of the show, this is not just a football rivalry any longer. Well, Wendell Green Jr. has played a lot of minutes. Having to handle the ball and be the point of the defense with his ball pressure. There's a wide back pick and a back cut. Beautiful. And Johnson will lay it in. He set the back screen. They we're planning on him getting a screen from Leor Berman and he just read the defense and back cut had plenty of room because they ran that so much higher than normal on the baseline. And when Katie Johnson is sticking his tongue out on defense he's having a good time and he's been having a good time today. Now the switch with Cardwell. Miller short. Johnson the board. In transition had it knocked away it stays with Auburn. Now take a look at KD Johnson here. He's going to set a back screen for Leor Berman. And as soon as he sets that screen, Berman goes off of it. And he thought he was going to get a down screen, but since Miller was on top of him, sort of top locking him, he just went back door. Beautifully done by KD, KD Johnson. And a great pass by Dylan Cardwell as well. Cardwell the rebound, but has it taken away by Sears. Bradley with a jump stop and he draws the foul. Well, he went right around Leor Berman. He is so dynamic with the ball. All of a sudden you think he's coming at you. Maybe you could take a charge and he just sidesteps and you got to foul him. But Berman didn't need to foul him because Cardwell was there. You know, he's there to try to block or change the shot. Bradley and McDonald's All-American had a big game against Gonzaga back in December. The Tide lost the game, but he had 18 points. And that is the third free throw, I believe, that he has missed today. He is now two for five from the line today, 73% on the season. They're coming off that big win against Florida, where Brandon Miller at 24 and 9. Jaden Bradley had eight points, four rebounds, and five assists against the Gators, and he plays a complete floor game. You can see there Alabama's in Knoxville Wednesday to take on Tennessee. You'll be there for that one. The top two teams right now in the conference. And if, if Alabama thinks this one's physical, wait till Tennessee. And top two by national rankings. I don't want to shortchange Texas A&M. They are second in the conference standings right now. How about the season that Buzz Williams Aggies are having? They're nine and two in league play. Sears all the way and Moore with a rejection. Donaldson has it stripped. Boy it is physical and frenetic right now and the two officials two of the officials. Owen Short Terry Oldesby are going to talk it over and decide who gets the whistle. What a great play from behind on the block shot by Chris Moore. Just wiping that away, LeBron esque, just before it hit the backboard. Everything's contested in this game. Every drive, every shot. 
By the way, we mentioned Texas A&M. They are at LSU tonight, SEC Network, at 8.30 Eastern. Another big game in this conference. Well, Alabama had to fight just to get the ball in bounds. Bruce Pearl's teams always do a good job defending out of bounds side, out of bounds under. Five guys, five seconds. That's all they got to guard. And a turnover. So much contact on that drive. Boy, this has been the best version of Katie Johnson today, hasn't it? He's played really well. I think he's one of those players that getting off to a good start is important for his overall game. He gets off to a good start, he can have a big night. What a pass. Donaldson to Broom, and a foul called on Betty Yako. I thought Broom was going to just loft that up quickly, but he took it up to dunk and made Betty Yako foul him to stop it. And every time Alabama's made a run, Auburn's had an answer. You know, it's not that they've shot the ball well because Auburn has not shot the ball well, but they have fought for everything. So Janai Broom at the line had to sit a while in the first half. That's his first point since the 11:06 mark of the first half. Coming up next, Jaden Gardner and the Hoos are hosting Duke in Charlottesville right after us here on ESPN. 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, career for Jaden Gardner. Got most of that at East Carolina. Bradley defended well by the freshman Donaldson. Getting louder and louder by the possession as Sears will quiet him down a bit with a mid-range jumper. Well, Auburn left the ball. They were concerned about the roll by Betty Ako, and he just cleared everything out and left Sears for that easy free throw line jumper. That's the first bucket of the game, Jay, for Alabama. That's not a three or something in the paint. Everything else, a three, a paint basket, or a free throw. And that's that's what Nate Oates preaches. That's what he wants. Yeah. They don't want a lot of mid-range jumpers. Analytics in uh, Alabama at the forefront there. Sears left alone. In and out. And Burnett got fouled on the play. That's probably going on Flanagan there. Yeah. It's been close throughout. Alabama has only led this game for three minutes and 22 seconds. There have been 10 lead changes. Auburn's led by as many as eight. They're up three right now. Well, Burnett has had some good minutes in this game. That block he made in the first half was big time. Alabama now eight for 15 from the free throw line. Yeah, that was the front end, so they're leaving some points at the line. Donaldson gets to the elbow. Miller tips it. Bradley's got it. Advantage Alabama in numbers. Five on four. Bradley into traffic. Whoa! Oh. That go in. And through contact as well. Talk about a downhill driver. What a finish by Jaden Bradley. Got a lot of game. And he's not afraid of anything. And that's a freshman doing that. Donaldson turns the corner again. What a bounce pass. And Broom will flush it. Well, Trey Donaldson was a heck of a football player in high school. Played quarterback and defensive back. You know who his coach was in high school? Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward. Sears is heating up. He started off quiet, but he is filling it up now for the tide, and they tied it. And his last two games coming into this one, Mark Sears was 7 of 11 from three-point range. You are not going to hold him down for very long. He was a primary scorer at Ohio. He is used to having the ball in his hands and having his number called. Donaldson picked up his dribble, needs some help, and he finds Flanagan with eight to shoot. Flanagan the pull up. Alabama ball and they're running. Sears around Johnson and now Alabama leads. Alabama's starting to get its pace now. They are running after a miss and pushing the ball down the court and taking advantage of transition defense by Auburn. 
A 9-2 run for the tie, Jay, to lead with 6.52 to go. Well, give credit to Jaden Bradley. What a tremendous finish. And then Mark Sears has made some really big plays. Getting to the basket, putting it in with that left hand. And Nate Oates, he loves the resiliency of this basketball team. This is not just a football rivalry anymore. Bruce Pearl, Nate Oates, Auburn, Alabama. It has become a great in-state basketball rivalry as well. And Jay, this one just added to the ledger of memorable games that we have seen in recent years and expect to see going forward. Here's Holly. Bruce Pearl huddles, as always, the most entertaining in America. He says to his guys, can they hurt us more from two or three? Three, it's three. They're better from three. He was very disappointed with how they sagged off three-point shooters on the last couple of possessions and challenged them to hug up more, particularly on Sears. And then he said, listen, we win this game if we get stops, get rebounds, and run. He challenged them to start guarding better. He feels they have been playing very well. Offensive foul Flanagan, even though they have lost four out of five, lost by three at West Virginia, by three at Tennessee, by five at AM. Can they knock off the number three team of the nation on their home court here today? You are looking at photos of Henry Harris, the first African American on athletic scholarship at Auburn, and also the first black athlete at any SEC school in the Deep South. Henry Harris, who played here from 1969 through 1972. Southern Hoops, a history of SEC basketball, a seven-part documentary every Monday through March the 13th, a new show at 9 Eastern, part three, 1971 1 through 79, Dale Brown's arrival at LSU, Pat Summit begins her career at Tennessee, and after the death of Adolph Rupp, Joby Hall leads Kentucky to its first national championship in 20 years. You can see it on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Alabama shooting almost 59% for the game. Auburn just 33%. And that just went up with that three from Wendell Green Jr. But Auburn with now seven threes in the game. And then the free throw line is what staked them out to this one point lead. 21 now for Green, second game in a row. He's had 20 or more, fifth time this season, but he just got called for a foul. Well, he and Janai Broom have been the most consistent performers. Just a little twist to that ball screen. Betty, uh, excuse me, Clowney is playing in drop coverage, so there's nobody there to hedge or help. And he just pulled the trigger. But you'd think 59% to 33%, Alabama's having its way with Auburn, but the free throw line and the fact that Auburn has limited Alabama to just five threes in this game, and Alabama averages 10 and a half. That, that's the difference in the game. Griffin with a couple of big makes there for the Tide. And they are back on top by one inside six minutes to go. I'd go back to the same thing and bring that bring Broom up. Williams wanted it in the post, didn't get it. Now Broom. Here's the ball screen again. Two-man game. These two guys have been doing it all day long. Still the drop coverage. Oh, what a recovery by Griffin. Griffin is a player, man. He's just getting better and better. Miller with a broom on him. Gives it up to Burnett, who slips, but finds Miller. Griffin. Wow. The freshman is feeling it. And this is the largest lead of the game now for Alabama. Over the last five games, Ryland Griffin has been truly outstanding. That just gives Alabama another weapon coming off the bench. Green, a beautiful feed, and Williams the finish. Brandon Miller turned his head, and Jalen Williams cut baseline to help a teammate that was in the three-second lane after he picked up his dribble. What a great cut by Jalen Williams. Miller gives it up again. But great job by Janai Broom to help out and recover with Clowney as he rolled to the basket. Burnett strong inside, tipped up and in. And Miller is down. And Miller came in from the left corner, wasn't blocked out. And after that ball just popped out, he popped it back in. Not sure where they got his ankle there or what happened. 
Those are also his first points of the second half for the leading scorer in the conference. And he is up and walking off under his own power. He might have gotten hit across the face inadvertently by Williams on his way down. Miller is staying in the game and appears to be okay. And a turnover gives it back to Alabama. Just one dribble to the left and you have the angle to make that pass because it's tough for Janai Broom when he's trying to seal Clowney in the lane to break contact and go after that ball. You have to change the angle to get it to him because he buried Clowney in the lane. Jasper in defending Sears. Sears goes baseline. Kicks it. Burnett for three. And Broom blocks out Clowney and Clowney is called for the foul. Well, Alabama is continuing to make plays in this game on the road at Auburn. A tremendous job to stick with the play by Rylan Griffin to get that block on the three by Green and then he steps back and knocks down the three at the other end. That's playing both ends of the floor for Rylan Griffin and Nate Oates wearing that Wimp Sanderson coat. Living for tomorrow is a fat lap. It's done, but still 357 to go here in this one in a game, Jay, in which Alabama has trailed for the vast majority of the game. How have they been able to take the lead the last few minutes? Well, one of the reasons has been the great play of freshman Rylan Griffin coming off the bench. He's got 13 points, two blocks. He's four of six from the field, and he's knocked down three of his five three-point attempts. And in a game where Auburn has put so much attention of taking Brandon Miller out of the game. Miller's got 10 points, but he's 0 of 7 from three-point range. You know, Auburn's within striking distance here as we get toward the end of regulation because they've really limited the Alabama three-point attack, but Griffin off the bench has made the difference. Great pass. Broom the finish, and it's a two-point game. A run in action so that KD Johnson can turn the corner, and that draws help, and Janai Broom wide open under the basket. A good job by KD Johnson negotiating that flare screen. Now Sears gets free and draws the foul on the drive. Mark Sears getting stronger and stronger as this game moves along. Seems like every drive that Alabama's making, whether it's Mark Sears or Jaden Bradley, they are body seeking. Uh, they're not they're not shying away from contact. They're helping create it. And as a result, Alabama is shooting more free throws in the second half. The problem is Alabama is not making as many 10 of 17 from the free throw line heading into these two for Mark Sears. This is a guy in eight Oates happy to see on the line three for three today now and 83 percent on the season. And when the big shots for Alabama get fouled Sears and Miller. Both of them shoot over 80%. Oh, and he missed the second one, though. You're not a believer in that announcer. First well, I thing, think we you? shared that one. We each had a hand in that one. It's like oh. a sack. We each get half the credit. For we that. don't share anything. That doesn't have anything <laughs> to do with it. Green open. And the rebound to Clowney. Miller in traffic, guarded by Flanagan. Got to stay low. Good help by Broom. Now Miller with a seam, and he lays it in. But he's got game. Wow. Just that little, little rub screen set by Betty Ako helped free him up, because now Broom's got to get back and pick up the roll. And that opened up that left-handed drive. There's the flex cut. Room. The lefty rejected by Bediaco. Those long arms. Bediaco, one of the best shot blockers in the Southeastern Conference. This is where Auburn has to have a stop. Horns action. Got the switch. Sears tripped over the leg of Flanagan, and it's Auburn ball. Green. 
Boy, fortunate to get out of that. Williams for three. And Green is fouled. Boy, that, that was a 50-50 ball on that rebound, and Auburn got it. Green got to it first. The littlest that guy on a, the floor. That was a huge rebound. Now watch this drive. The, the screen was never really set, but Janai Broom has to get back. And it was almost like a, a quick double team. And this rebound was huge. I mean, Miller had a better opportunity, I thought, to get it. But that leads to two free throws. And if Auburn doesn't score here, that makes a, a comeback win much more difficult going down the stretch. Green, a good free throw shooter, and just as importantly, a guy who gets to the line a lot. Averages about six free throw attempts per game. About to take his eighth here today. I don't think anybody ever told him that he's under six feet tall because he doesn't play like it. One of two. So Alabama wants to run its offense with pace, but they don't have to be in a hurry here. With a two possession lead, the clock is a friend of the tide. So here comes Miller to set the high ball screen. He can just ghost out of it. Oh, Sears lost it. Flanagan. Green cross court. Johnson wide open. Rebound Flanagan. Up. Not in and down with it is Clowney. Boy, more opportunities on the offensive glass for the Tigers, but they come up empty, and Griffin with a flush at the other end. And Bruce Pearl unhappy. He thought with all that contact, there was a foul on the rebound. But Alabama took advantage of it and got the easy one the other way. Final minute. Green a miss. Miller the rebound, and he's fouled. And the tied up six as they walk to the free throw line at the other end. Now let's take a look. Janai Broom there to grab the rebound off this second shot opportunity and there really wasn't wasn't a ton of contact there but a great shot fake by Rylan Griffin to be able to get to the basket and Bruce Pearl not happy with it but I'm not I'm not sure there was a foul there on that initial initial rebounding action and Alabama moving closer to its 22nd win of the season the Tigers have missed their last seven shots and Nate Oates' team, which has played in some hostile environments this year, the number three team in the nation, looks like they're going to get out of this one with a win after really trailing most of the afternoon. And you're left with the feeling of not only the talent of this Alabama team, but its toughness. This team is tough, man. Yeah, for them to go 12-0 and in SEC play with as good as this league is, this is an impressive Alabama basketball team. Alabama has never been a one seed in the NCAA tournament. They certainly could be this year. Alabama has never been to a Final Four. They certainly have the talent to get there this year. And I thought a couple of years ago when they wound up losing to UCLA, the free throw line was what got them beat against the Bruins that year, the UCLA. You know, went to the Final Four and lost to Gonzaga in the national semifinal. That team had Herb Jones. I, I thought that was a Final Four, Final Four favorite. But this team, this team is really good, and the depth is impressive. Williams for three. Bediako skies for the rebound. Shot clock turned off. Eight-point game. And it looks like no fouls coming. Boy, an afternoon that started off in such promising fashion for Auburn is going to end up with another win for Alabama. These two will meet again in Tuscaloosa on the 1st of March as Betiaco slams it home. The final margin will not reflect how close this game was for most of the afternoon, but a lot of credit to the Tide for finding a way to win this one here at Auburn. That basket will count. Alabama now moves to 22 and three. Nate Oates has himself a heck of a team, and they've got some some big hopes going forward in the next few weeks. Brandon Miller and company win 77 to 69, four in double figures as they remain undefeated in SEC play now with 12 and 0. Let's send you to Charlottesville, Duke, Virginia.